Whilst talking with my parents recently, I was reminded of a pile of old Super 8 film reels, all of which were recorded before I was even born, and now just sitting in a cupboard. You can't have too many projects in your life, so I thought I'd start a new one, and attempt to view and archive this old Super 8 camera footage. With the film now over 50 years old, it can degrade, so I wanted to halt this ageing process and make digital copies. Super 8 cameras were around in the late 1960s and 70s. They used thin reels of camera film to record video housed in a sealed cartridge. You would then have to send this cartridge off to be chemically processed. It was very clever stuff for the era, but not exactly Ultra HD by today's standards. Google search showed that there are commercial scanning services available, and also hobby scanners, but they cost over £300 each. I have no idea if there is anything usable on these film reels, let alone what the quality of those scanners are also like. A search on YouTube lists other projects which are very similar to this, but they all seem to have one thing in common. They take an old Super 8 projector and modify it to capture the images with a digital camera. This sounds great, except I don't have a projector to begin with. What I do have is a 3D printer and lots of spare parts left over from other projects. Could I 3D print my own Super 8 scanner? After a few hours on FreeCAD and 3D printing some stuff out, here's my first prototype. Commercial scanners and Super 8 projectors often use a ratchet and pull mechanism to move the film frame by frame. I don't have the luxury of one of those. Instead, I decided to use a simple roller wheel powered by a stepper motor. The beauty of this is that I'm unlikely to scratch or damage the film by pulling on the sprocket holes in the tape. And I can also nudge the wheels forwards and backwards to align each frame in the gate. It will also accept film which is uh, damaged or torn. A film gate is uh, quite simply a rectangular opening which we use to focus our camera into. And talking to cameras, for this prototype I'm using one of these very simple one megapixel cameras. Uh, this one's got a 6mm lens. I've mounted it onto a 3D printed sled which can be adjusted and focused onto the film. My goal for this first prototype was to write some code to capture a still image of each frame and attempt to stitch them together into a video. For the light source I'm using a 12 volt LED light bulb powered from the fan output on an old uh, ramp style 3D printer control board. I'm also using this board and the Marlin software to control the stepper motors. The main roller mechanism where the film feeds through is known as a pinch roller. I originally thought that two nylon wheels would work but the film just slips through them. I tried gluing a rubber belt to the wheel but no luck, that just slips as well. I wanted a soft rubber roller. Unable to find anything suitable, I ended up wrapping a large rubber band over the gear. Amazingly, it worked really well in the tests I did. I'm using OpenCV to analyse the image from the USB camera. It will detect the sprocket hole in the film and then use a stepper motor to align that sprocket into the centre of the gate or the capture window. So first we capture a single image. Needs rotating, but that's easy enough. Now I need to detect the sprocket hole. We can apply a mask to the image using OpenCV. This removes part of the image we have no interest in. I want to apply a mask to remove everything except a thin line of the sprocket. After applying the mask, we need to blur the image so the colours merge together to make detection easier. We also make the image uh, grayscale, which is easier to process and requires less CPU. Now for the fun part. Using the OpenCV uh, threshold function, we can strip out all the parts of the image we're not interested in, keeping just the sprocket hole. All that happens in a blink of an eye, but it does go to show how much work and image processing goes on for computer vision. The detection returns me the coordinates of the sprocket hole. If it's not near the centre, I use the stepper motor to nudge the film up or, up or down until it is. A couple more hours tinkering on the code and we have a basic working system. I'm also capturing the images from the camera in a raw format and saving those as PNG files to avoid adding uh, compression artifacts. Using the FFmpeg software, we can take the sequence of images into a single playable video file. Super 8 film is recorded at 18 frames per second and uh, has that sort of vintage feel about it. Here's the results of the first try. Considering that I wasn't even born when these images were recorded, I feel like a bit of a historian digging up the past. For a first attempt, I'm quite impressed. 
each film reel has just over 3,600 images, which cap captures about three minutes of video. I've not attempted to clean these film reels, so I suspect uh, they may help get rid of some of the artifacts and scratches visible on the film. Uh, the brightness and the colour reproduction are also going to be an issue. And finally, I do need to increase the resolution. Super 8 film is never going to compete with the modern camera tech, but I should be able to get better than I have here. I also need a, need a simple way to rewind the film, as doing by hand takes ages. So now I have a functioning Super 8 film scanner, 3D printed and built from spare parts. Time to hack it a bit more and see if we can improve the quality. After searching in the garage, I also found a box of rubber grommets, one of which is a nice snug fit over the top of the GT2 gear. This should make scanning much quicker than using the rubber band. I've previously bought several Raspberry Pis for different uh, projects, and I also have a high quality camera for it. I've just seen that you can buy a microscope lens, which I think will work great for this project. So now I know there's uh, useful footage on this film, it's time to put my hand in my pocket and buy the lens. Oh wow, uh, this lens is huge compared with the USB camera I was using. So it's gonna be time for a uh, remodeling free CAD. Here's the completed setup. The camera sits in a sled, which can be moved around to focus and align the image. And then the screws are tightened down to lock everything in place. For the light, I've kept the 12 volt LED bulb. It's a five watt MR16 style. In front of the light, I put several sheets of white greaseproof paper, which gives a good diffused light. I suspect this would be better if I had a proper light diffuser gel or plastic sheet. We load a film on the left hand side with the sprocket hole facing down towards the table. This is then fed into the gate window and out the other side. The film is pushed through the pinch roller and now you're ready to start scanning. I've already written the code using Python, so this ported over to the Raspberry Pi really easily. When the Python code is first run, it launches into a setup mode. Here we can get a fast video preview of what the camera is seeing so we can tweak the focus, settings and colour balance. We can also adjust the threshold to locate the sprocket holes against the film background. As mentioned, the camera can be slid forwards and backwards, and also using the two, two adjustment screws, the height can be adjusted to bring everything into alignment. The plastic gate can also be slid left and right to ensure that we can see the whole of the frame we want, along with a section of the frame before and after. We're aiming to get a clear picture of the entire frame with just a little bit of black border on the right hand side. The brightness can be adjusted using the slider bar and the threshold for the detection. The camera settings are locked during the recording to avoid the white balance and light levels changing. Once we're happy everything is aligned, simply tap the spacebar to start the scanning process. Once a few frames have been scanned, you can loop the film into the take-up reel. This will automatically wind up the film as the scanning progresses. It's important to leave some slack on the film so the stepper motor can reverse if it needs to. Now it's just a case of waiting for everything to scan. It's going to take about one hour to scan th a three minute reel. There are two windows on the screen. Uh, the preview or raw window is shown on the left and the last capt captured image is on the right. Whilst the scan is running, if the code loses the posi position of the sprocket hole, it will stop, allowing you to manually adjust the film or the thresholds to get things back on track. I found that when scanning, I often need to stop and go back a few frames to correct the white balance or brightness of the scan. I originally ramped up the camera resolution to nearly eight megapixels. However, this is way overkill for Super 8 film, which has a theoretical maximum of about two megapixels. So I experimented with the camera settings and found that the image sensor has a useful setting called mode two, which halves the resolution, but seems to be quite quick to capture images. And they do appear to have a slightly better color and softer focus, which matches the Super 8 film very nicely. Now on to part two of the process. After the scanning, we now have thousands of photos which need to be aligned and stitched together. The photos are known as full frame scans because they have the sprocket hole and the frame borders visible. This second piece of Python code runs on my desktop PC, as it's a bit quicker than doing this on the Raspberry Pi. Its job is to loop through the photos and carefully align each frame, cropping it to the correct orientation and size. You can see each frame as the process runs and aligns. The code will stop if it's not sure and let you manually correct the location of the sprocket hole or change the thresholds. This process could have been merged into the scanning, but keeping it separate allows you to manually adjust and also realign if needed without pausing the scanning process. Once it has generated the new image, it saves those as PNG files. These are also lossless, 
but take up a lot less storage than the originals as they're now a little bit smaller. Python and OpenCV are not exactly speedy when creating a PNG file, and each frame takes about a second, so this alignment process takes a few minutes to run. So finally the fun part, putting all these images together to make a video. I've tried two methods to achieve this. The first is very simple to use and uses the FFmpeg to generate the video. This is nice and quick, but you can't easily edit the frames before making the video. I'll put the commands you need to run on the uh, GitHub readme page. The second method is to use video editing software. I use DaVinci Resolve, which natively supports a folder of images. Don't forget to set up the timeline to use 18 frames per second, and then you can import the images really easily. This method also allows you to color correct the images. Color correction is an entire art form in itself. I'm definitely not an expert, but what I'd, I normally try and do is to set the correct white balance on each segment of the video and perhaps tweak the gain or offset controls to make the images look a bit more natural. When the original Super 8 film was recorded, the lighting conditions would have always varied and they were not the highest quality of cameras. So it's usually best to slice the film into sections, look for the uh, jump cuts where the camera was started and stopped. Then it's just a case of tweaking the color settings until you're happy things look right. I output the final video into a full HD resolution with the black edge bars. This seems good enough for the final footage. Here's some of the footage I've discovered. A lot of 1970s air shows and also recordings of the adventures of my uncle who was in the Royal Air Force. So not your typical home movies. It looks like the camera followed him all over the world. I'll put some full resolution sample videos at the end of this one. So to sum up this project, it's definitely possible to 3D print a film scanner, and I'm happy with the results. I've only about 20 reels to process, so I'm not too worried about the speed. However, that's the biggest hurdle I've found. Quality of the final video is dependent on a good quality recording in the first place. A lot of the film I'm scanning has scratches and marks on it due to its age, and probably mishandling over the years. DaVinci Resolve has some very good image filters, which could be used to clean up the video, However, you would need to purchase the license to do that. I hope you enjoyed watching this little project. If you want to build your own, the files are in GitHub. Please consider subscribing and liking this video if you want to see similar content from me. So I'm off to uh, spend a few days scanning film, but if you want to stick around now, you can watch the samples I've already made. Uh -huh.